And so those are some really nice skills to really get uh, scapulothoracic control uh, going on. And then, of course, we have uh, demands overhead. So we have to start training this. And so these wall slides, we can emphasize the different behaviors of the of the scapula. And so we can really emphasize a protraction emphasis, asking her to really wrap the uh, scapula towards that mid-axillary line as she slides up. Uh, we can ask her to emphasize a posterior depression as she slides up. And, uh, if you keep your hands on the posterior aspect of the scapula, I'm sorry, you can't see my hands as I raise them up, I see that, uh, but ask them to keep the scapula in contact with the hands to follow the hands uh, using more of a tactile cue. Uh, there and then you can even bring your hands out and emphasize the uh, upward rotation behavior of the scapula as they slide up the wall. So those are just three three elements that you can really emphasize, and then you start to get a, a functional uh, integration here. And I love these little landmine uh, behaviors because, as you can see here, if I can dig my fingers up under her scapula, uh, and she's under a loaded bar doing it just a landmine press, which this would be uh, a less demanding activity than say a military press. Uh, in the end ranges, um, we want to make sure that the the uh, the kinetic chain is is well stabilized throughout the process because at some point, not only are we focusing on the behavior of the glenohumeral joint in the scapulothoracic uh, region, it needs to to channel that force through the torso and into the ground, and so we want to make sure that it's there's uh, there's a good connectivity between each of the components. So you can really start to see why we attend to each of the different. Uh, parts of the corridor and the body as a whole as we get into these, these exercises.